Hey, good afternoon, friends. Just wanted to show you uh, some of the initial steps in converting this small barn into a little shop in our new location. Uh, the barn is roughly about a 20 foot by 20 foot footprint. But as you can see with the gamble roof, it's gonna have a nice loft upstairs for some material storage and for some items that'll just get them up off the floor, such as an air compressor, a dust collection system, etc. That'll be all upstairs to try to maximize floor space on our little 20 by 20 barn. Uh, today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you inside and we're gonna show you some of the initial steps I've taken to uh, make run some circuits in this barn so that we can have electricity and light. Uh, just a little disclaimer, I am not an electrician. However, I've uh, gotten some really good advice and help from a licensed electrician and so have done some basic wiring in here. I'm gonna show you how I've done it. Definitely, if you are contemplating doing electrical work on your own place, whether residential or uh, for a workspace, recommend that you consult a licensed electrician, uh, consult your local codes, and also pull any necessary permits as may be required. So let's go inside and I'll show you what I've begun to do. Okay, so we can see here mounted on the uh, inside of the same wall where you saw the conduit coming out of the ground, uh, came through the wall here and up into this nice 100 amp service panel. My intent is to run some circuits for both power and light. Uh, I'm gonna start off by showing you, um, well, we're gonna run all 20 amp circuits. Okay, so that means we're going to be using 12 gauge wire. So going to stick primarily with 12-2 MC cable. That's a jacketed cable. And so everything I show you in this video is going to be using all the parts appropriate to running circuits with MC and the related pieces and parts. Stick with me. Okay, so what I'm using, uh, if you'll notice, and this is to not uh, promote any one brand over another. This just happens to be the brand that matches what my electrician installed using a Square D uh, home line series of circuit breakers. Along with that, we're using a uh, commercial grade outlet here. If you look really closely, you can see they are a 20 amp, 125 volt commercial grade outlet. Also have some uh, snap-in MC cable connectors for hooking to our boxes. We're using a standard exposed work. Uh, I like the deeper uh, two and an eighth inch deep four by four exposed work box. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. And of course, along with that, the uh, double gang two outlet per box covers. We're also using some uh, two-hole strap connectors, miscellaneous wire nuts, and also let me try using these connectors as well. They are a push-in connector that can be used inside your boxes to connect as many as four conductors together. So we'll show you the application of those as well. And just some miscellaneous pieces and parts like a spare package of ground screws to be used as needed. So in this shop, you can see the all around, I have uh, block walls and an open frame ceiling. Uh, those are a nominal full size two by six joist, which might seem a little undersized for a second floor, but it's a short span, so they're gonna be just fine. So we're gonna talk about how we do and map out our circuits in this environment. So my intent is to run again, I said a few minutes ago, all 20 amp circuits. My intent is to have all of the lighting in the building uh, connect to the one 20 amp circuit. There will be uh, two branches of that. In other words, so there'll be two light switches in the circuit. One will control all the interior lighting. The other will control some future exterior lighting that I plan. Uh, that'll be installed at a later time. Uh, the other 20 amp circuits, I'm gonna run four of them. Two of them 
will be for the outlets here on the main floor. One will be a circuit that I will reserve solely for anything I put upstairs, namely the uh, compressor and uh, dust collection, anything else that I might want to run up there. And also I'm going to have the one other 20 amp circuit that will just be left. Uh, I'm not going to hook a circuit up to it, but it'll be an empty breaker that will be for any future needs or use that I uh, don't foresee at this time. So that's my plan. Let's talk about how we're going to put the plan together. Okay, so this is an old original light fixture. Uh, there's a penetration through the wall to another exterior light fixture. Old style, just ancient wiring. I mean, it probably was functional and okay, but it's all been abandoned and I have chosen not to reuse these. These will eventually come down. But what I have done here, and pardon some of the debris, because I've, I've brought some materials and uh, even a couple pieces of furniture in here temporarily. But what I've done is I've gone around the perimeter of the room and I have mounted these four inch by four inch boxes on the wall in the locations where I want outlets. So in a 20 by 20 area, I've chosen to put two of these equally spaced uh, on each exterior wall. And then I'm also going to uh, mount one upstairs and then I'm going to mount a couple of exterior boxes that I have not yet mounted yet. So anyways, in mapping out the circuits, I first laid out where I wanted my fixtures to be, and that's what allows me to put together a plan on how I wanna run my wire. Okay, so here we have a wall-mounted four-inch deep box with an MC cable connector uh, on top and one of the uh, knockouts. And what you see here is I've, I've pre-run a pre-cut length of MC cable over to the next box and it ends. So how are these boxes gonna get power? Well, I'm showing you this to show us a couple of rules of thumb that I'm gonna follow uh, that have been shared with me by an electrician. And that is to start at the end of your circuit and work your way back to the box, okay? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna start from the end of the circuit and daisy chain from one outlet to the next around the shop until we get to the breaker panel. And then that way, the last connection we make will be to the breaker, not the first connection. Uh, in addition to that, another rule of thumb that we're gonna follow is, is that where these MC cables have three conductors in them, those conductors are black, white, and green. Black will be running to the hot, white will be run to the neutral, green will be run to the ground. Now, even though I stated them in that order, the reality is with every device I connect, I will start with making the ground connection first, then the neutral, then the hot. And it's that order that is best practice when connecting devices to a circuit. So as we go along, you'll see that that's the order that I do it in. Okay, so we have here some two hole straps that I'm using to, there to get the light a little better. Two hole straps to fully support the MC cable as it's going along the outside of this brick wall, block wall and the MC cable clamp has now been clamped tight. So now we're going to uh, strip the jacket off of the MC up until it gets near to the top of the box, and I'll show you that once it's done. Okay, so you see here I've got the jacket off of the MC cable, left it just on the inside of the MC clamp on the box. This gives us a nice, uh, easy ability to now work with the three conductors in a 12-2 uh, MC cable. This plastic can just simply be removed, and now this is ready to go. A good rule of thumb when leaving yourself enough wire to connect your devices, this is a, a bit on the long side. Typically, if you hold your wire out like that from the box and use your fist, and typically I like to use my thumb as well, you cut the wire at the end of your thumb, like that, that's gonna give you plenty of wire to use to hook your devices up. 
So I'm going to cut them and then I'm going to strip the last uh, half inch to five eighths of an inch of um, protection to leave the exposed conductors for making my connection. Okay, so here now they've been cut to length. So what's the value of running that much extra wire outside your box? Well, the value is by cutting off these ends, I now have about a five or a six inch piece uh, of conductor left after making the cut. These six inch pieces are gonna come in handy shortly and you will see why. Okay, so here's why. I'm going to show you how to save yourself a lot of time and effort and make things really easy for yourself by pre-assembling your outlets onto your faceplate and doing what they call pigtailing. So each of these outlets has an approximately five to six inch long pigtail coming from the hot, the neutral, and the ground. Why is this a good way to do it? Well, it's because by doing so, when you make your connections in your box, you'll be able to hook your outlets up um, in parallel and not in series. What that means is each of these devices, there's two devices, each device has two plugs, okay? So each device or outlet will have its own independent connection to the circuit all the way back to the breaker. So if one of these outlets ever were to fail, the other outlet will still work. If you were to not do this pigtail approach and connect these outlets together and have a single connection to the circuit, if one outlet fails, they all fail. And it'll be a little bit more difficult to diagnose where the problem is when it comes time to make a repair. So by pigtailing your devices independently of each other and connecting them each with their own connection to the circuit, this will be a superior product. So let's go through the sequence on how to put this together. Okay, so first let's talk about the tools that are needed. Uh, you'll see here that I have a few different types of pliers. One is just a standard pair of uh, bullnose cutting pliers, uh, kind of a simpler version of what an electrician might use, um, kind of like a lineman's pliers, but simpler. Then you have what uh, many homeowners will see uh, be a common uh, wire stripper, stripper type pliers, a set of needle nose pliers, a multi-bit screwdriver so that the bits are interchangeable between the uh, straight Phillips and uh, star drive. And then this is a very specialized uh, automatic wire stripper that um, you'll see how it works in just a minute. Do you need all of these tools to do the work I'm getting ready to do? No. You could get by with one. Um, you could perhaps get by simply with your multi screwdriver and your wire stripper set of pliers. But having this variety makes some of the individual tasks in this sequence uh, go easier. So this is the assortment of tools I'll be using in my demonstration today. Okay, and so for materials, we're going to be using two devices. That is two duplex outlets that together will make a double gang box, okay? Here we have a double gang exposed box work cover with the associated uh, screws and nuts, some electric, standard electrical tape, and then six, six inch long approximately conductors. Two black, two white, two green. Let's see how they go together. Okay, so here we have one of our six inch conductors with our specialized uh, wire stripping pliers. Again, not affiliated or promoting any particular brand. M numerous companies make a similar product. What you do is these two jaws clamp the wire and when you squeeze the pliers, it will automatically pull the jacket off the short end. In this case, I'm allowing, it'll be approximately three quarters of an inch that will be stripped off this wire. Okay, see how that worked. Now, all you can do is just with your fingers, pull it off. And there you are, one stripped wire. Now, on each one of these conductors, I'm going to strip approximately three quarters of an inch off of one end and about a half of an inch off the other end. Uh, the reason why will become obvious shortly. 
Okay, so you see here on one end, we have all six conductors, approximately a uh, half inch or so. Here, let's get that to focus in for you. There you go, a half inch on one end. Okay, and then on the other end, approximately three quarters of an inch plus stripped on the other end. We'll see how they go together now. I guess you'll have to pardon here. So far in this video, I've been wearing some radial work gloves with holes all through them. I decided to take them off just for the sake of simplicity and ease. So the first thing we're going to demonstrate is what we're gonna do with the three quarter inch end of our conductor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this tool here. Simple set of wire strippers, but if you notice, something different up here on the on the jaw side you see where it says loop right there these holes have a specific purpose that purpose is to allow to easily create a loop on the end of your conductor so let me see if i can do this one-handed you stick the wire through the hole just a little bit and then you use it to bend the wire. I'll show you the finished product in a second. Okay, so you see how that loop was used and I could just spin the pliers around and create that hook on the end of these conductors. I'm gonna do that on all six. Okay, so now we have all six of our conductors with the hook bent on the end of one end, the, uh, the longer of the two ends. So these hooks will now be used to uh, install the conductors onto the devices. So here you have a standard device and on the back of most electrical devices you're going to see three sets of connections. You're going to see the brass or gold colored connections. That typically is the hot side so your black wires will be attached there. This would be the neutral side with the silver colored or chrome colored screws. And then green here represents ground. So this is the ground screw. Now, if you'll notice here, the neutral, there's two neutrals. And right now they are connected by this tab here in the middle. So it does not matter at this point, And for my use in this instance, to disconnect those two. So the ground can be connected to either one of these screws and you will have a continuous connection for both outlets. Same with the opposing side here, the hot side. That tab connects those two screws, so either one of those screws can be used. There are, other, there are reasons why you would remove that tab to have each of these outlets separate, perhaps one switched and one unswitched, but in this case, we're gonna leave them all connected. So let me demonstrate the connection here. Okay, I have not yet tightened this connection, as you can see, because it's loose. Okay, good. But if you'll notice that the hook is going around the screw in a clockwise fashion. The reason for that is, is as you tighten the screw, the screw will draw that wire around tighter and tighter. If you were to hook it on the other way, like this, uh, tightening the screw could actually cause the wire to want to come off and out from under the screw head. So it's best if you let your conductor go around the screw in a clockwise fashion, letting the screw tighten down on it and draw it around. Uh, additionally, uh, once you're on a screw head like this, you could take a pair of needle nose pliers and even squeeze that together more before you tighten the screw head. Uh, I will do that. Okay, so if you notice, it's clear that I did uh, tighten that up with a pair of needle nose pliers, but I have now torqued this ground screw down good and tight. You really don't have to worry about tightening too tight. I guess with enough real force, you could strip a screw, but it's highly unlikely. So you really want to torque your connections down good and tight when you're making these connections. You do not want loose screws in an electrical circuit. So that's good and tight. We're going to move on to the ground and then the hot side. Okay, so what you have here, the hot the neutral and the ground have all been uh, installed and the screws have been torqued down. 
okay? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a little bit of electric tape. This is uh, just insurance. It's not necessarily 100% needed, but there's no problem with taking a few moments to protect exposed connectors. So I'm gonna wrap the perimeter of this in electric tape and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so all I've done, just a single layer of wrap, I've wrapped the perimeter of this device in electric tape just to give a little bit of extra protection to the three uh, screwed connections. Okay, so what's next? Well, here on the outlet, you'll see there are some creases in these tabs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break off these tabs because these tabs are only necessary in, in residential applications. With the face plates I'm using, these tabs will be in the way. So let me break them off with some uh, needle nose pliers. All it will take is just flexing them back and forth a couple of times and they'll pop right off. So just so you can see the difference, um, the outlet on the left has had the tabs broken off, the outlet on the right has not. But I will do the same to both. Okay, so the tabs have been removed. I've also removed the screws that came with it. Those screws also will not be necessary. Now let's talk about how this goes together on the faceplate. The faceplate comes with screws that match the holes, threaded holes on the, or the uh, unthreaded holes on the tabs. And they will simply be uh, using screws and nuts, attach these top and bottom very tightly. This will make a very secure outlet, one that won't flex like some in residential applications uh, you might experience. This will be a very solid connection. Also as an insurance policy, I will take one of the screws that came with the outlet and install it in this third center hole as well. It will be a rock solid outlet when it's done. Okay, so here we see the device fully installed on the faceplate. This screw has a corresponding nut, as does this one, a corresponding nut. And this one, uh, again, is using the original screw that came with the outlet, and that simply goes into a threaded hole in the center. I'll tell you what, that is one rock solid outlet. Uh, you might be able to break the plastic on the face of the outlet, but that outlet is not flexing, not moving, and it's on a nice heavy gauge metal face. Definitely gonna withstand some use and abuse. I'll go ahead and do the other side. So what we have here is one completely assembled double gang faceplate with outlets and six inch conductors.